There's a new contender in the 250 class. The Triumph TF250X is said to be the fastest and the lightest in the category. But is it all just hype? Are we just getting excited about a new machine with some impressive marketing figures? Can the Triumph really beat the best in the game? Today, our mission is to find out. The Triumph is going to have to beat some fierce competition today in order to win our 250 shootout. We've chosen two machines to go head to head against the new British Beauty. Over here we have the Honda CRF 250. The Honda won every American 250 title going last year with the Lawrence Brothers on board. So it's safe to say that this machine has some real race winning pedigree. Which is why we've got the red bike here today. Honda might have dominated over in the States last year, but in Europe it was a different story. KTM earned yet another MX2 world title, their 15th by my count, thanks to Andrea Adamo. So obviously we had to get the world championship winning Brad here for our shootout as well. So we've got the US champ and we've got the world champ and we've got the new kid on the block with the impressive numbers. But which one will be fastest here today? I think it's about time that we hit the track to find out. A big thank you has to go out to our channel sponsors for supporting what we do. And a big shout out also goes to our Patreon members. Head over to our Patreon page and join the 999 Laser family for exclusive content and cool perks like getting your name in the credits of every single one of our videos. We've assembled a top team of test riders. We've got three different pilots here today, each with different levels of experience, to give us a range of perspectives in our shootout. First up, we've got Sean Smith, an experienced veteran racer who's actually currently the over 50s British champion. He does a lot of riding for us here on the channel, so he's very well experienced in testing out motocross bikes. I don't know anyone that rides quite as much as our friend Sean, so it'll be interesting to see what he thinks to the new Triumph. Sean comes with age and experience. Our next rider though, Tyler Westcott, comes with youth and exuberance. Tyler is a former British MXY2 champion. He's going to be racing the British MX2 championship this year and he's won at the Western Beach Race as well. He's got style, he's got speed, so let's see which of these three bikes he likes best. And finally, providing us with the female perspective, we've got Anya Colley. Anya is a former jet ski world champion, and now she's jumped headfirst into the world of dirt bikes. Anya currently rides the Honda CRF250, so it'll be interesting to see how she likes the Triumph and the KTM. Now, in terms of the format for the day, I've asked the guys to rank the bikes in the following categories. That will give us an insight on how much they enjoyed each machine. But to decide our ultimate winner for the day, we're going to have to get the stopwatch out for a classic 999 Laser Hot Lap Showdown. So hitting the track first, it will be the Honda CRF250R. Here we have Sean Smith behind the bars on board the Honda. And the clock is on for Sean. Whilst Sean is laying down the hammer for his fast lap, I'll tell you some facts about this Honda. Now, the Honda hasn't changed much for 2024. The CRF 250 underwent a big change in 2022, and the platform has pretty much stayed the same since then. Now, the bike is actually the joint lightest in the class, alongside the Triumph at 104 kilograms. And it's also on the cheaper end of the spectrum as well. Only the Suzuki beats out the Honda in terms of price. Like I said, the bike didn't change that much going into 2024 because it did have that big update just a few years ago in 2022. The changes for 2022 included an updated aluminium frame and some changed engine characteristics. Before 2022, the Honda was known to be a high revving machine but now, according to test riders from around the world, the Honda feels a bit more like a Yamaha. It's got good low to mid power, but not as fast on top as other contenders in the class, such as the KTM. 
Reported horsepower figures for the Honda CRF250, you're looking just under 42 horsepower for this machine. The bike is said to be nimble and lightweight, which makes turning very easy. And it is supposed to be a very user-friendly motor because of that strong low to mid end power. The suspension isn't said to be too great on the Honda, hard to set up apparently. This bike here we have with us today has been set up by ShockTech, so it should be riding very plush out there today. Perhaps the main drawback for the Honda for some people is the cable clutch. Sean's coming towards the end of his hot lap now on board the Honda CRF250. He's looking good out there on the red machine. He's about to hit the finish line. Up and over he goes. That's a lap completed on the Honda. Next up, let's get out on the brand new British Beauty. Triumph TF250X is perhaps the most exciting machine in motocross right now, especially for us Brits. We are quite proud to have a machine out there doing the business on the MXGP stage and on the Supercross stage as well. This is a brand new machine built from the ground up by the Triumph engineers. They have been inspired by what does work in the class. So they've taken inspiration from KTM, from Yamaha, from Honda as well, and selected componentry that they think works the best. The bike was developed by great names such as Ricky Carmichael, Ivan Tedesco, Clement DeSalle, and many, many more. Perhaps the headline figures for the Triumph is the horsepower number. A reported 48 horsepower for this 250 four-stroke motocross bike. This is also one of the lightest bikes in the category as well. 104 kilograms, the joint lightest in the class, which means that the Triumph has the best power to weight ratio in the category. This bike has an aluminium frame with twin cradles. It's got a, an east start, of course, but it's got quick shifter, it's got traction control, it's got launch control, it's packed full of technology. We've got Brembo calipers, KYB suspension on the Triumph and generally high quality components across the board. Now the bike is a little more expensive than the Honda that's for sure, one of the more expensive bikes in the category, but will that translate into on track performance? We're about to find out here today in our 2024 250 shootout. Just a handful of corners left for Sean on board the Triumph. And I have to say, he's looking good on board the new bike here today. Sean's powering down towards the finish line jump. This is final chicane to go and up and over the finish line. How did you think he looked on board the Triumph? Pay close attention and let me know your guesses in the comments down below. Which bike do you think Sean looks fastest on? Finally, we have what some would say is the undisputed king of the category, the KTM 250 SXF. I say this bike is the undisputed king of the category. Just look at that list of world championships that the KTM 250 four-stroke has won since the introduction of the class 20 years ago. They've won 15 world titles. You cannot argue with that dominance. For 2024, the KTM 250 didn't change too much 
The bike received a big update in 2023, so the 2024 machine hasn't changed too much since then. Much like the Triumph, the KTM has launch control, it has a quick shifter. So again, this bike is packed full of rider aids and tech. KTM obviously has the WP 48mm exact air forks and it's also supposed to be one of the strongest in the class in terms of engine performance. With strong horsepower numbers you're looking at 45 or 46 horsepower depending who you ask and that power is supposed to be very strong mid to top. In 2023 KTM really focused on improving the mass centralization of this bike so the motor was actually tilted two degrees backwards and lowered by eight millimeters to better centralize that mass. The KTM is still using a steel frame, which some people say is a bit stiff. It's a very highly rated bike and as we've seen this platform has won a lot of races and a lot of world championships. So let's see how it fares against the other bikes we have with us here today. Can the KTM reign supreme once again? We'll find out very soon. So before we see Tyler in action and before we reveal the hot lap results, let's just talk to Anya and hear her thoughts on the Triumph compared to her Honda. So I've got Anya Colley with me who's saved the day by bringing the Honda along. We had something fall through and Anya came in at the 11th hour to save the day. So big thank you to Anya and to Esbridge Commercials who you're riding for this year. This is their bike, right? Yeah. So a big thank you to you guys for coming along and saving the day once again. So first question, Anya, it's your first time on the Triumph today. What were your first impressions riding the brand new bike? It was awesome, to be honest. And the only thing I really noticed was how thin it was. It was a lot thinner than my Honda, but the power was awesome, like the top speed. The bottom end was, I thought was quite smooth. And then once you gave it some, the top end was, was yeah. sick. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's supposed to be the fastest in the class and we'll find out later if that's true. <laughs> Compare it to your Honda then. No, I think because it was thinner, it actually felt like it was lighter. Uh, but I was like, oh, it must be because it's a little bit thinner that it just felt like it was lighter. Kind of like when you jumped, you could throw it around a little bit more. And then I thought the bars were, felt a little bit different. I'm not sure if they're, they're a bit wider than my bars, but the Honda I absolutely love, to be honest. Like it's the first time riding one, I've not rode a Honda before. Um, and the hour that I've had on it, I absolutely love it. I think it's great. But overall, it's just very cool to have another bike yeah. in the mix, isn't it? Yeah and something for everyone, right? It's amazing that Triumph have done it and everybody's talking about it. I've got to admit, like, so I feel privileged to have actually been able to jump on one. So thanks so much to Triumph and to you. Yeah. Thanks for letting me come along and, and ride the Triumph today. Now, thank you for bringing the bike. And again, thanks to Esprit Commercials as well. Yeah, I hope you had a great day on it. <laughs> So before I get the guys to rank the bikes and before we reveal those lap times, I think it's only fair that we see Tyler in action. Now these won't be Tyler's full laps, but I just wanted to give you guys a little taste of the action here with Tyler on board. I tried my best to film each of the bikes in the same locations on track so you guys can watch and compare. So pay close attention and let me know in the comments down below which machine do you think Tyler looked most comfortable on. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. So that's a quick lap with Tyler on board the KTM. 
Next up, he's on board the Red Machine, the Honda CRF 250R. Let's see how he looks on board. It's all red. What's the TF250X made of with a young up and coming MX2 Pro behind the bars? So there we have it then. You've seen Tyler in action, we've heard from Anya, and you've seen Sean lay down his fast laps. So let's talk to the lads, hear their thoughts, and let's reveal those lap times. So before we reveal the lap times, I just need to say a big thank you to our sponsors, Pewterline, for supporting what we do and helping us to make videos like this one. If you head over to the Pewterline website, they've got a cool feature where you just type in your bike model into the search bar, whether it's a KTM, a Triumph, or a Honda, and they'll pull up all of the products that they recommend you need for your bike. As always, a huge thank you to Pewterline. We couldn't do this stuff without their support. Check them out. There's some links and more info in the description down below. So I've got my uh, top test team with me who um, have been riding these bikes today. Everyone's put lots of riding in on all of the bikes. I've got the lads to rank the bikes as well. You rank them in terms of chassis and handling, engine slash power, Brakes, looks, tech, and fun factor. Now, I'll start with Sean. You rank the bikes. Your favorite, according to these numbers, was the Triumph. Yeah. Second favorite was the KTM, and then in third place was the Honda. Yeah. Explain yourself. What did you like so much about the Triumph? Your first time riding this bike today? Yeah. Well, it's just phenomenal. As soon as you jump on it, it feels very light. The joint lightest in category. Yeah, but it felt extremely light and that makes you feel confident when you're on a bike when it's light because you're, you're able to move it about and do whatever you want. Funnily enough, it's got, it's got very wide handlebars. We did measure them and they, believe it or not, they are three mil wider. Than the KTM yeah. and yeah. the Honda or just KTM? Uh, we only measured the KTM, okay. yeah. When you ride the Triumph and then jump off that onto the KTM, they're very similar, they feel very similar. Just everything about it, I think they've really done a cracking job with it. If I had one criticism, it'd be that just the old alter the gear in the sprockets because it didn't quite, it didn't quite pull the gear I wanted it to. Like it, it, you have to use a bit of clutch basically, just sprocket change, and I think it'd be pretty much dialed in. So, moving on to the KTM then, which is something that you ride yeah. day uh, week to week. That's your race bike, is yeah. KTM 250, right? Yeah. But I've got the older style chassis, yeah. so this is a 24. We've done a test on these, you know, a um, yeah, a couple of years ago, and they were phenomenal then. And it's, it's, yeah, again, it's a very, very good bike. I raced my bike yesterday, and then I jumped on that today, and it, it rides the same, but everything's refined. It felt, everything felt refined on it, felt at home on it, so. Yeah, really enjoyed it. And Very then the good. Honda, why, why was the Honda at the bottom of the pack for you? Literally just because of the tech, you know, like on them two bikes, the KTM and the Triumph, they got quick shifter, Triumph has got 
like it's launch control with traction like control. yeah traction control with a like a get style rev counter so you know so when you do your your starts you know exactly Which what kind is, of rev. I think an optional extra oh, uh, that's not standard on the bike yeah. that is an optional extra right, you can okay. get yeah. from Triumph yeah. it's not an aftermarket thing you yeah, can yeah. get your yeah. bike with it but yeah just because of the tech really that just let the Honda down no hydraulic clutch and the brakes on the Honda were weren't very good at all compared to the other two bikes. The other two bikes, you know, they both from Brembo's and they stop on a dime. The Honda just like didn't work so well for me. You're just missing markers, do you know what I mean? So I wanted to be on the track, it was it was hard to get there because the brakes didn't work that great. And that's my only criticism, you know, chassis wise, it, it's you know it felt it felt pretty good. The bike the bike felt good. The only thing that's let it down is is the tech side. Yeah. No hydraulic clutch and the brakes. I think it's safe to say that there are no bad bikes no. in 2024. It's not like back in the 70s when you get one and it'd be an absolute yeah. pile, wouldn't it? There's no bad bikes anymore. So that's what veteran racer granddad smith oh, cut the, cut that <laughs> that's out. what he thinks let's let's that. see what our young up-and-comer mx2 pro thinks to these bikes so let me get ty's scores up so ty you was quite diplomatic about it your favorite bike was the honda and the other two actually tied what are your thoughts on the bikes again your first time riding the honda uh, the uh, triumph today yeah like you said all the bikes uh, they're really good bikes but I don't know, the Honda, the one I rode the best, I, like the way it turned was really, really good. It handles really nice and I lo really like cable clutch, so that's why I choose that one, yeah. ch chosen that one. It's worth mentioning as well that this is your bike, so we have to thank Ty for bringing his KTM along today. He got us out of a hole on that one. It's, it's interesting that you've scored the Honda over your own bike. Yeah, and yeah, the power on the Honda was good as well, where a few years ago on the older ones they weren't as good. Mm -hmm. but yeah, with Triumph from KTM, like Sean said, when you got off the KTM and onto the Triumph, they felt very, very similar. So it's, we got um, used to the K Triumph quite quick. Yeah. A question to both of you then. Obviously, when the Triumph were first announced, there was a lot of comments online saying, oh, that's just a KTM or that's just a Yamaha. Did it feel like the KTM? Did it feel like another bike or did it feel like its own thing? Some characteristics, yes, but not, no, not riding it. It yeah. just felt, it felt lighter. It felt so much lighter and it felt like you could just move the bike about more and the more you rode it the more confident you got on it and it is a brand new bike with like two hours on it so once you've done some more hours on that and everything was bedded in i think you could you know you could definitely um, improve on lap times for sure talking of lap times then obviously this is a 999 laser video so we did a hot lap challenge both of the boys put down fast laps on all three of the bikes so um, producer phil can i have Tyler's times first please so we'll go through Tyler's times and then we'll see if your times are the same or different okay so we'll start with third place for Tyler was the Honda with a 158.77 second So, we are about to reveal the winner of our 250 shootout. But in order to prove to you guys that these results are legit, I'm going to show you Tyler's laps on the KTM and the Triumph in full, side by side. So here we go then. The clock is on. The KTM is on the left, the Triumph is on the right. neck and neck at the start of the lap then. Tyler looks to be using exactly the same lines around the track, scrubbing nicely over that jump. Perhaps a slight advantage for the KTM at the moment. He dives into the inside. Never so slight advantage for the KTM during the first quarter of the lap. Try and edging up closer. Oh, it's close, it's close, but I'm still giving it to the KTM at the moment. Oh, good turn for the Triumph though. Strong off the bottom in the deep stuff. 
and it looks to me like the Triumph has edged up into the lead. You can see we've got a bit of roost on the lens on the KTM side of things. Now, I would usually use a different drone shot with a clean lap, but this was actually genuinely Tyler's fastest lap of the day on board the KTM. So this is the shot I'm using. And yes, it does look like then. The Triumph definitely has the lead now. He hits that jump, 100% the Triumph is in the lead. Only a handful of corners left to go. Is this really going to happen? Is this really going to happen for the Triumph? Can't quite believe what I'm seeing here. The Triumph has a commanding lead over the KTM now. Through the final chicane, the Triumph is going to take the win. But by how much? Let's find out. Second. KTM with a 157.09 which means Triumph came out tops for Ty, a 155.83. So a big difference. Yeah. Were you surprised? Yeah, I thought it was like, faster than KM or Honda. We have to say these lap times come from the cross box, which is a GPS yeah. logger, so those times are dead accurate. There's no, I'm not being slow on the stopwatch or anything. So let's see if Sean, Sean's times are any different. Let's see this if the order gets mixed up. <laughs> This is going to be interesting. So third place for Sean, the Honda, 202.77. Second place, KTM, 201.11, which means again, Triumph comes up on top, a 159.69. Really? A 159? Yeah. So you're two seconds quicker on the Triumph, mate. No way. Wow. That, what do we reckon yeah, to that then? That, that was yeah. interesting. Yeah, very interesting. I didn't think I'd be that far away in lap times between the KTM and the Honda, uh, KTM and the Triumph, um, definitely. Do you think because this is the fastest in terms of horsepower, it was quite low me out there today, you think that played a big factor in that? No, because it didn't feel fast. Didn't it? it no. Didn't feel any fast no, 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 no. Yeah, it didn't feel that quick, not compared to the KTM and, and the Honda, believe it or not. The Honda had real good the Honda's got a really good engine, it's really torquey and it's a strong motor and it revs. But the Triumph, I, I didn't think it was the fastest out there. I mean, it's, don't get me wrong, it's good. It pulls strong and it revs hard. Numbers Do you know what I mean? I know, but there you go. And I think, yeah, I think that was down to the chassis and the ergonomics and everything else. You know, I, I, I purely think it's, I don't think it was the motor, I think it's the way that bike's the been put package. together. Yeah, the whole package. It's got KYBs in it. It just filled you with loads of confidence. And yeah, I, I loved every second of it. So it felt smooth. So it is worth mentioning as well that all of the hot laps were done back to back to back. So Sean did his hot laps, Triumph, KTM, Honda, and then Ty went out and did his hot laps back to back to back. So it's fair in that regards. Uh, we're going to put the side by side GoPro and some of the cross box data on our Patreon page as well. So if you want to see that, join up to our Patreon and you'll be able to see that over there. Also, we need to say a big thank you, right, to your sponsors, HGAA, for yep. sorting you out that bike and, and you bringing it along today. So big thanks to those guys. Again, to Anya, to Esprit Commercials, Buttercup Farm MX, this guy as well. And uh, Triumph, of course, for bringing the bike down and the two blokes behind the camera. As always, guys, my name's Max. You've been watching 999 Laser. Till next time, we'll see you at the track. Yeah.